Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Shutt, episode 388, featuring the first in the series of interviews, Mr. David Beatty, uh, the creator, or uh, should I say reanimator, of the game Mega Wars. Uh, now, Mega Wars is a game with a very rich legacy, huge history. Uh, the roots go all the way back to the very earliest, not just the online multiplayer games, but really just the first games, uh, period. And David here is to keep that uh, legacy alive, uh, but also uh, to, you know, see what the potential of the game is for the future. He's done some really amazing stuff so far, so I thought it'd be great to have him on and share his story. Uh, anyway, in this first episode, we talk about the history of the game, uh, where it came from, and, and all that uh, kind of stuff. And the future episodes, we'll be talking about the uh, current project and also i show you some gameplay footage uh, with uh, David and I playing uh, together. So I think you'll really enjoy all of this. Anyway, there's a lot to cover, so without further ado, here is Mr. David Beatty. All right, folks, I am here with the great David Beatty, the guru of Mega Wars of uh, Crimson Leaf. How are you doing today, David? Doing good. Doing good, Matt. Good to be on. So we've been talking about Mega Wars for a while. Uh, you mentioned you've been working on it now for, you said, 30 years. It's kind of become your, your life's work, would you, would you say? Well, I started playing it 30 years ago, and during the time that we were playing it, we were thinking about it was Mega Wars 3, and we'd always thought, well, let's build Mega Wars 4. What would it look like? You know, And actually, yeah, it kind of started that long ago. So, But uh, actual development on Mega Wars... Started in 2008. Serious development. And you said you've been pretty much working on it every day, even if it's just a little five-minute bug yeah. hunt, right? It's, it's just, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around how much work you've actually put into this. Um, it's, it's at the point, Matt, I really don't want to think about it because uh, <laughs> if I really thought about it, but then again, you know, it's instead of watching television, it's instead of doing, playing other games and that kind of thing. Now I have been playing games. I've been, I, I played Stellaris and I got the new Advent Colony, you know, nice games, but, uh, um, I decided what, basically what happened was in 2007, I got the domain name for Mega Wars 3. And when I did that, um, when the registration came back around a year later, I go, oh, I haven't done anything. I was so excited about this. And I decided at that point in time that I was going to work on Mega Wars every single day, whether it was five minutes, making a sketch, making a design, thinking about a change. I was going to make a Work on Mega Wars five minutes every day, and and I have done that pretty faithfully, except when I was on vacation. Well, I might have even thought about it, but <laughs> you get the idea. When I've woken up in the middle of the night somewhere in Tahiti, right, with an idea for the, oh, <laughs> I could do this. <laughs> uh, where to where to begin this tale? Uh, I, I you know I imagine most people that wa are watching the show maybe they're familiar with Mega Wars already. You know, it's, it's been around a while, but why don't we just set the stage for somebody who has no idea what we're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, so basically in 1984 is when Mega Wars came out, and um, I had just gotten a, a TRS-80 Model 3. Oh, that's and I trashy. picked up a modem, <laughs> yeah, and I had picked up a modem, and uh, what it was was it was uh, uh, someone had an accounting that was their accounting computer. And so they let us know, hey, we've got this computer. You can buy it. And I picked it up for a song. And it, when I got it, I went off to Radio Shack because I needed to buy some disc. And when I was at Radio Shack, I picked up a brochure for CompuServe. And I thought, oh, this is kind of cool. So I brought the modem home and got it all hooked up and um, – because I knew I wanted to be online because I'd already, you know, been playing on Apple II and that kind of thing. But so I so I got the the ten hours free, and the first thing I found was Mega Wars, <laughs> and oh, this was great. And so 
I, I there's a one page of commands. I think I sent you the book, so if you want to display that, that's that's available. But there's there's a page full of commands. It's three letter commands. You type in T O R space uh, torpedo, and then you'd hit one for tube one, comma, and then you'd give it a gradient's value. Now gradients is different than angles. It's zero to four hundred, and then it actually makes doing math in your head easier because three o'clock is a one hundred. Then six o'clock is two hundred, so you can just do gradient math in your head instead of angles like oh forty five degrees, you know that kind of thing. So I first got out, I got right out into space in Mega Wars. I don't remember which. How, war how it old were you at this time? Uh, let's see, I was probably twenty one or twenty two. I'm an old fart. I've been playing around with computers before this. Sounds like oh yeah, yeah for for apples and stuff. And uh, uh, actually, I <laughs> sat in an Apple store one day, um, and they had an Apple computer in there, and I sat down and started playing it. And the salesman brought somebody around and said, now this is a game he's playing. Now look at this. And I would just sit in there. I would just demo it along. And so the guy made a sale. Okay, so get this, all right? So he makes a sale. And so I get up to leave, and he goes, what are you doing tomorrow? And I said, <laughs> no way. <laughs> Nothing. He goes, why don't you come in after school and just play on the computers and, you know, I won't pay you anything, but you can play for free. I said, sounds good to me. <laughs> so I would get off of school um, and then go down there and sit for two or three hours and he'd bring people by as I was playing games and he was making sales and he was happy kind of as a, a bug. So booth boy, I guess you'd call yeah, it. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kind of a demo guy just sitting there. Demo you know, guy. Playing along. <laughs> yeah. So actually that started my demo career. And, uh, so I guess that's where it all kind of started from. And, uh, so I was familiar with computers by the time I got that computer. Um, I had, like I said, I've been using apples for several years and that was probably 1984, somewhere around that. Um, uh, yeah, because I got married in 85. So yeah, so it was about 84 or so and, uh, just started playing on that in, in that text-based game. Fell in love with it. First time I left the first system, they got destroyed. So the first goal in those days was just to leave the Imperial base without getting killed. And uh, uh, so then I got out and found my first planet and grew it. I thought it was great. And I started scouting around and found somebody else's planet. It was like 100 times bigger than mine. It was like, oh, I'm not even anybody. Planet yet. Envy. Yeah, Planet Envy. And uh, so basically, and this is what I like to tell people, Mega Wars, and it played for 15 years on CompuServe at, uh, at a pay per, per hour price. Okay. And so we were paying uh, $6 an hour at one point to be at 300 baud. So it's about 30 characters a second. So you can actually read it as it's coming across the screen. Okay. And uh, so it was $12 an hour for 1,200 baud. So if you got into combat, you want to go to 1,200 baud. So you'd log out and log back in and get into combat with somebody. And uh, so that's that's what we ended up doing a, a lot of and melted a couple credit cards. But yeah, that's about hey, the, I was trying fun. to do the math here. So how much do you say it was per hour to, to play? Six bucks an hour. Six bucks an hour for 300 baud, which basically you can type faster than that. Can output, yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. So, um, yeah, what kind of credit card debt did you uh, yeah, rack you up on? You don't want to Are you know. still I paying a, it off? <laughs> I, I had a $3,000 month one month and had wow. to go get a – Go had to go get a, a project from a guy to pay that off. So yeah, my kind of Lisa, we were just married, and oh, that, this must have gone over well. <laughs> she goes, "What is this?" I goes, "Nothing, nothing. I, I got the money for it. Here you go." And so, but that's okay. She bought she bought clothes, so we both had our spending habits. So <laughs> well, there's there's certainly worse things. I think we some. I like to think about this though. Just we take it for granted the internet and the web and broadband and all that stuff. And it really wasn't that long ago. And this was a, no, no, it really wasn't. Now Windows ninety five is when it really took to mainstream at that point. You know, you're in you're you're in education and stuff. You guys were using the internet long before the rest of us ever got there. Really. Yeah, I remember playing the muds and. Uh, well, it's just, I usually had a thing on my Facebook the other day about Pine. You know, how many people remember Pine? 
And I noticed yes. that pretty much all my uh, university friends uh, were familiar with it. But I don't know to, if I'd have ever come across that outside of a university context. Uh, I guess you'd yeah. have had to be in some kind of computer science job to know anything about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you really would have to be. Um, I actually pay, played um, at the University of California at uh, San Bernardino. They had the Trek, the original Deck Wars. Yeah, I wanted and, to get into this a little bit. So, yeah, good, <laughs> good <yeah>. segue. <laughs> so, yeah. that, it didn't start off Mega Wars. It was based on this earlier game, right? Exactly. Um, uh, the, the first real online multiplayer game was um, um, uh, Deck Wars. Okay. Actually, before that was Space, but that was really a, a one or two person. But Deck Wars took it to eight people at a time. Okay. So you could have eight players. And uh, that um, uh, all, was all started, playing at the same time. I mean, that's the all playing at the same time in combat against and with each other. And uh, so, and here again, it's all text based. And you can go on the internet and search up. Uh, uh, actually, a guy just came to me recently that he has started a uh, deck war simulator. And so it's all text based the way the way it was originally, that kind of thing. So, and I can get you the link for that, so you can put it on the page, so if people want to go check that out. His name is Harris, cool guy. It Real just cool. amazes me to hear stories like that. I mean, is it just you think it's nostalgia that drives somebody to to do something like that, or was there just something that's more fun about those that this sort of old style text parser that holds up today? What what's interesting is books still hold up too. Yes. And the thing about Mega Wars, and I ended up fighting with this in the beginning when we first started introducing graphics. But that's not the way I see it, is what I would hear from people. Because be, you're reading it on the screen. Torpedo hits target. In your mind, you're visually creating that. Just like a book. Does that make any sense? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Okay. So originally I was fighting what the players saw in their minds. That's not what I think the ships should look like. The ships should look like this. And uh, so we actually had a little contest of what everybody thought the ships would look like. Hmm. <laughs> so we ended up with all these little concept sketches that were hilarious. And um, the uh, the – that was the problem that we had is I just don't see it that way. And and what they meant was, in my mind's eye as I'm reading it, this is what I'm seeing is taking place. Yeah, that's exactly like books. I've been watching all the James Bond movies, and uh, there's, the question always comes up of which actor is closest to Ian Fleming's Bond. And <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, usually what people pick that one, Lazenby guy that nobody even remembers his movie. Um, oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> That's hilarious. Now, so let's take it all the way back. So we were talking a little bit about Deck War. Yes. And yeah, we'll go back to Deck Wars. And there was a Star Trek uh, tie in there somehow. Yeah. Um, uh, Deck Wars had Klingons and the the, uh, the Federation. And now, here again, yeah, Paramount no was totally cool with you using all the IP. No, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't. <laughs> no, not me at all. The, but it was just the words. It was here again. There was no graphics, right? So your little ship was like a, a a little arrow, and you would fly around the screen, you know, using these text-based commands. And so, University of Texas was the first one that created that. And uh, Bill, oh gosh, he's going to shoot me. I can't remember his last name off the top of my head. Uh, uh, Luden. Bill Luden. Thank you very much. Bill Luden. D was the head of games at CompuServe. And so he contacted University of Texas and said, hey, I'll, I'll buy the, the Deck Wars. You have it advertised that you'll give all the source code for $50, and here's 50 bucks. I'll buy it. And so he brought that, gave it to his developers. They cleaned out all the Star Trek references and made the cryons and – and the Argons and, and, and built up these different guys. And um, that became Mega Wars 1. And I think it supported, I think they went to 100 players with it. 
and he found uh, uh, two guys at the University of, of um, uh, Virginia and said – found them because they had introduced a game. And he goes, hey, I want to bring that game over. And then he found out they had created a game called S. And yes. he looked at it. Yes, S. That was the name, just S. Just the letter like, S. <laughs> just the letter S. It's just, that's the name is S. And so um, taking that, he goes, he, he took a look at it, and they were playing it and trying to see how it worked. And here again, it was around eight players. That, that was the norm in those days. And they played in a room, and one of the guys got up, because someone had just took his planet and grabbed his chair and came over to hit the guy on the head, and they knew they had a hit. So well, that's how they do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back in the old days, you could actually duke it out. You know, yeah, if you can work up enough planet. passion to playing a game to hit somebody over the head with the chair. That's <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good engagement, right? Yeah, that is good engagement. The um, uh, one of the more important things about Mega Wars, and I, and I try to stress this is. The players are the content. We provide an arena to play, and the players are the content. So the players are the ones that are actually – it's like a baseball game. you got a field. You have bats. You have balls. But the game changes with every player, and the Angels experienced that this season. I called it a, a, the season of missed opportunities because they ended up changing so many players, they had to learn to work together again several times hmm. and they had injuries and everything else so they bring somebody new and that changed the dynamics of the team mega wars is the same way it's a very i want to say simple but it's not but it's, it's <laughs> you know, a, i don't think anybody describe yeah, it as eight, simple. <laughs> eight years of development is a simple game um but uh the the thing about it is it's a it's a basic set of rules the content you know, varies because the planets change. You have a new universe every four weeks. But what really makes it change is the players. And that's the key uh, because the players are the content. So sort of, you're not the customers, you're the product. That's right. There you go. <laughs> okay, so the, he, yeah. he, paid, he paid that $50, brought that over, cleaned it out, and then uh, the game that S – they then kind of took a look at what they were doing with the deck wars and made that the engine for flying around, made the planets, that kind of thing. And that was the beginning of Mega Wars at that point. So Mega Wars 4. So they skipped Mega Wars 2 because the guy's internal kind of poo-poo bill and went around them to make their own version of Mega Wars 2, and it never went anywhere. So they skipped the number two. It messed up the numbering system. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we were going to go Mega Wars 5, but Neil Har Halford said, no, no, let's just do straight Mega Wars. It'll confuse everyone. I said, okay. <laughs> so. Man, that's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Should be uh, back next week with a uh, part two of my interview with David. A lot, a lot of great stuff coming up, so stay tuned. I know you guys will enjoy it. Uh, also, remember in the show notes, you can find links to uh, David's Mega Wars project and all the other stuff mentioned in the news segment. So uh, just don't forget to check that out if you want to follow up. As always, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much for supporting this show. Guys, you just have no idea... Uh, how important it is and how much I appreciate uh, your support. I mean, you're keeping these shows coming. I couldn't do it without you. There's no advertisements or anything. I hate the <laughs> I hate ads. Uh, you probably do too. And all I ask is just one buck, uh, just one dollar per episode. You know, happy to do the work. I uh, just I really appreciate you guys uh, helping me out that way. I uh, don't think that just one buck is not going to make a difference because it really does. And I, I really do appreciate it, so thank you for that uh, very, very much. Uh, if you want to do this, you haven't done it already, uh, just go to that link in the show notes to the Patreon site. Uh, very easy, a couple of minutes, uh, you're good to go. Uh, or you can go to the uh, mattchat.us site, a couple of different ways to uh, support the show that way. But uh, whatever it is you do, I really appreciate it, and thank you. Thank you for that. All right, so what about that news from the Matt Cave? All 
right, I got a couple of uh, fun items here. Uh, the first is uh, from Robbie. I have uh, more to say about him in a minute, but he sent me a link to this Kickstarter project. This is the Heavy Metal Thunder Mouse RPG. Uh, this is of mice and their motorcycle clubs. So it's kind of weird. <laughs> you know, I, I sort of had the same sort of idea, but with rats instead of mice. But it uh, took too long. I never did anything with it, so I guess I've been beaten to the punch, as it were. Uh, but it's kind of a <clears throat> Sons of Anarchy meets, uh, I guess, Biker Mice from Mars, if you remember that from way back in the day. Um, let's see, tabletop role-playing game where you and your friends make your mice, find, found your club, and hit the streets. Mice with gusto to build their own motorcycles and set off in an intimidating world <laughs> where they are outsized but never outclassed. Uh, so this is using the rules of fate. Uh, tell the story, uh, two to five players, fit for episodic play. I know that's a big thing uh, for, <laughs> uh, for those of us who are now over 40. Uh, so this only lasts a few hours, uh, the sessions. So anyway, they're trying to raise $4,725, and they're already up to $4,197, so very close. And they got 23 days left to go, so that's looking really, really good. Uh, it's $10 pledge to get the PDF, and if you want the signed paperback, uh, that's only $25 for that. That seems like a pretty good deal to me. I signed a soft cover book uh, for $25, bucks and you know, also support that uh, Kickstarter. Anyway, it looks great. Uh, check it out. Let me know what you think. Uh, next up is uh, from Adam. Uh, he was telling us about this uh, Project Hubbard. Now, this is the official Rob Hubbard Kickstarter. If you don't know who Rob Hubbard is, uh, you really should because he is the guy that wrote the original theme music uh, to Mad Chat. It's from a game called Sanction. It was uh, remixed or uh, updated, uh, but it's still Rob Hubbard's tune. And now uh, this uh, project is pretty massive. Uh, lots of pieces to it. Uh, there's a book, full color hardback book. There's a, a Sid music <laughs> compilations. Uh, there's even a Commodore 64 cartridge uh, they're making for this. And uh, the stretch goals are incredible. It's uh, just, there's even a vinyl LP in the mix. I mean, this is just crazy. Uh, they're trying to reach $65,000 on this. They're up to $42,000 already. And this just started a few days ago. So anyway, definitely go check that out. Uh, if you like Rob Hubbard as much as I do, and, and the guy's basically a, a Sid Tune god, uh, but he's done lots of other great uh, chip tunes and, and game music and computer music. So definitely go check that out. All right, and then uh, finally we've got Chris Avalon, and he's been dropping hints on his Facebook page. <laughs> uh, I don't know what kind of game he's playing. You never know with Chris. Uh, you just never know with this guy. Uh, but he's been posting all these cartoons. He, he loves to... I've actually got some of his cartoons over there. Uh, but the, the, lately he's been posting the uh, Fallout-related cartoons. He's, it seems like there's some kind of Fallout game uh, Chris Avalon is involved with. Um, some people are saying it must be Van Buren, uh, if you remember that. Uh, I don't know what, what the hell's going on. I, I would love to see something with uh, Chris Avalon Fallout. I would like to see something with uh, Chris Avalon and Tim Kaine. You know, I'd love to get those guys together on something. Uh, I don't really have uh, any more knowledge of it, but I wanted to mention this just in case you might know something. Uh, if you do, please, <laughs> you know, I'm begging you, please go to my comment section. Let me know what is going on. This is kind of driving me crazy. Uh, I should probably just see if I can get Chris on maybe to talk about it, but he's a busy guy. Uh, so anyway, uh, there's that. Okay, so lastly, I wanted to share this with you. Uh, this is uh, from a friend of the show, uh, Robbie. Uh, he was uh, cleaning out his house, making some room for his uh, son, Anthony, and uh, he, he found he had an extra copy of this really amazing thing. I'll show you this in a minute. Uh, so we sent this on. So first of all, thank you, Robbie. Uh, incredible, uh, incredible stuff. <laughs> what can I say? It's, uh, you know, what can you say uh, to something like that other than just thank you? Uh, but this is uh, the collector's edition of Baldur's Gate 2 Shadows of Om. And I mean, just, you know, even if this were an empty box, I would be impressed with this. The size of it, the quality of the box, uh, you know, how good it looks on the shelf. You know, it just really makes you sad. Uh, that we don't see more of this kind of stuff today, right? But inside the box, with some uh, really incredible stuff too, there's a, all this stuff is fully laminated, kind of a little guide here with the spells on it. 
Oh, there's a card got in there somehow. A couple of cards there. Uh, I kind of spoiled the next part of the uh, the package though. Uh, collectible cards, and these are also laminated. Let's see. It's got the statistics of the characters on them. There's Corgan, Blood Axe, there's Emowen, Nalia. You know, I was looking, I think uh, Minsk is in, surely Minsk is in here somewhere, right? But I see Jahira, but he must be somewhere else in the box. But anyway, some really awesome collectible cards, a uh, notepad. And I thought this was, this was pretty fun uh, because, you know, back in the day, I think Baldur's Gate 2, it had a little, a little journal of, of notes. But, you know, it, it would sure be nice also to keep something like this handy just to write out notes so you can remember to go back and do stuff. Uh, a nice little, I like the, uh, the idea that they would put this in uh, for you with expectation, you know, that you're, <laughs> you can be taking notes as you play. Uh, I also had a manual, and I mean, look at this thing. This is about 200 pages, yeah, 250 something pages, probably about 260 pages, spiral bound. You know, you just don't see stuff like this anymore. And then uh, not only did it have a uh, you know, soundtrack disc, it's not only does it have this cloth map, this is what I remember, uh, it also had a, I'm sorry, not only did it have a paper map, but it also had the cloth map. And these cloth maps to me are just really the, one of the best things about these old games. And yeah, they're not necessarily practical, uh, but they're great. I, I like to frame them and put them up in my mat cave here. Uh, what's, what's this, a little interplay store? Well, wow. <laughs> Fallout 2. So, yeah, anyway, just incredible, incredible stuff. Uh, so thanks again, uh, Robbie, for this. And uh, Robbie's a bit of an artist. Actually, I think he's a, a really wonderful artist. He's been giving me these little uh, cartoons of rats and act, rats uh, with weaponry. Maybe he's uh, thinking about his own game, hopefully. <laughs> uh, but anyway, he said that... Uh, he wanted to send this in celebration of what I believe to be the 10th anniversary of Dungeons and Desktops. Uh, congrats on all your accomplishments and continued success. Your gift to gaming, and I'm quite thankful for your impact on securing the future of game studies. Uh, so uh, much respect from ccsu.ce. Uh, so anyway, thanks again, Robbie. Incredible stuff. You know, what, what can I say? It's, uh, you know, it's just amazing. So, so thank you again for this uh, wonderful gift. Alright, so let's uh, wrap this up then. And I was uh, looking for quotations about space and all this stuff and I, I came across this, this little page of quotes from Jim Kirk, Captain Kirk from <laughs> Star Trek. And man, this, this just seemed like the perfect quotation in the episode with. Uh, and it goes something like this. The more complex the mind, the greater the need for the simplicity of play. That's from the episode Shore Leave, first broadcast on December 29th, 1966. So I hope you guys enjoyed that and see you next week. Charlie, it's your turn to play hunchback. Thank you very much. I was just out walking my rat and I seem to have lost my way.